see, these numbers tie into special tendencies that exist within human beings. They're not some abstract concept. The number one, the number two, the number five, the number seven, they're expressions of things we already normally do in life. The number one is based on the human proclivity for drive, for independence, for freedom, for the need to create and aspire and be separate and to make a person's own mark so that they stand out. Two is, again, recognition of the other person, but also working together towards a mutual goal, that two people now have the same goal in mind and work towards the same goal, even though there's two people, because the goal might have been started by one person, but two represents two or more people working together towards the same common interest. So these are, they're all expressions. Three is an expression of a sort of a temporary fruition, the growth period, brainstorming, adding the creativity. Number three is for you to bring your own expression and to bring your own uniqueness to something and even to have a little bit of imagination and fantasy involved. Four, however, is just saying, look, what are the physical laws? What are the rules? What are the regulations? How do you make this thing in order? Bricks are not round. Uh, triangles are not square. There's there certain laws. Four is just about structure, realizing that everything is built on a foundation, and if you don't have good foundations, then you can forget about building because the thing will collapse. So four is extremely important. About It's about obeying the laws of the world, not the laws as, as you see it. And the four is, is the test of obedience to those things, and it's also the challenge of making ideas practical. Five is learning, growth. It's always about growing because the human being needs to grow. You create the foundation, but then, okay, where do we go from there? The five is exploration, it's research, it's uh, getting out and about, and it's experimentation and innovation. Whereas six is about harmony and also about the concept of communication. Like now maybe we broadcast what we've done or what we've created to other people, but within a social setting, meaning it stays within the idioms of civilization. So it's not esoteric. The six is the sharing of ideas within two normal people in a very normal, casual, familiar way, without a lot of digression, without a lot of mystery, without a lot of uh, explanations and footnotes. It's very conversational, very light, but at the same time very productive. The seven is for is one of the big troubleshooting types of uh, number, which of course then that it, people think that the seven habitually in numerology they think is very inactive time. There's nothing inactive about a seven. Um, seven is the time for those people who have those kinds of skills of analysis and discrimination and troubleshooting and awareness of what might come around the corner as a problem. These are the forecasters who say, okay, here's a bunch of things in our business, or here's a bunch of stuff we're planning, or here's a, something, a project or an enterprise. Let me start to think about all the things that could go wrong. A lot of people can't do that. The seven days to assist you doing that because on the seven day, those kinds of limitations or impediments might appear in microcosm. So therefore, the mystery of it is, you know, the metaphysics of that is pay attention to that because those are microcosmic little examples that you can use. So instead of getting fed up and frustrated and, and, and not wanting to deal with it, the stuff that comes in on a seven is very, very good for those analytical people who are thinking about tomorrow and how to troubleshoot problems. The eight, of course, is the most energetic. It's similar to one. It is about totally physical achievement. It's also about going for broke, taking risks, perhaps having to move very fast without planning. And like the nine day is a based on a particular proclivity that human beings have, which is to care about other people, to be charitable, to think less of the self, which doesn't mean think nothing of the self, but it means to maybe be concerned about the other people around you particularly if somebody has done good for you or particularly if somebody needs help. And then there's days when you really absolutely should not answer those calls because it would totally sabotage your own projects like the one and the five and so on. So say, let's take the nine again. That is based, that's just a number expression of a human trait or a human proclivity. Nine is sort of scaling back the personal needs and desires and taking to see that nine is not altruistic and it's not about martyrdom. It's about realizing that there is a satisfactory part. You feel satisfied when you are also assisting other people because there's a learning in that as well. It is good for humility, which is why nine is connected to humility. So it's like an exercise in humility is maybe assisting somebody else in their particular needs. Nine is also about taking care of the lives of the health of pets and animals. 
it's for definitely pulling back and being a lot more reserved and quiet for attending to moves. And if you're scholastic or technical, then it is definitely for doing the fine-tuning, precise, you know, determined, focused kind of work. But again, the essence is on solitariness. So on a nine-day, you don't want to be very social, and you don't want to be completely caught up. Why? Well, it's very obvious. The simple logic is that tomorrow is going to be a one-day, most likely. Not all the time, but often nines are followed by ones, in which you're going to need all the dynamism and the energy. So see, the adversarial part of the mind would love us to burn off a lot of energy on the nine and not get to bed till very late so that we're really kind of burned out on the one. So on the nine day, it's not just about running around trying to find somebody to help uh, or anything like that in a sort of panicky way because you, you feel that uh, something will be wrong if you don't. It's about learning the lesson that comes with seeing the needs of others. But again, not letting those needs override your own. And so then the one, the 10 is again back to the one. And 11 is the master vibration. That's for all those kinds of things that deal with higher destiny. 11 is about choices and major decisions, about courtroom and legalistic types of events. It's also a time for coming from the highest truth. So we understand what we were saying earlier. What good is that to somebody who is not in truth? The 11 day could then be considered quite painful or uncomfortable for people whose morality is pretty lax. Because 11 is a day in which dark sides of the personality, injustices, immorality, cutting corners, that kind of thing might show up. The reason why that stuff is showing up is so that you can get rid of it and not do that and start to work towards being a better person. The 22 is similar to that, only again, the 22 now, I think of it as that the 11 helps you to interface with the divine or the higher guides. It's very pure. It's very based on divine justice and balance. The 22 is a number of mastery, but it helps us to become masters in regards to the world, in really high-end areas which have to do with physical, professional recognition and fame and so on. The public image, Mm -hmm. your public standing, your public status, your public image, as well as a spiritual component. Because, of course, to get to be that famous or to get to be recognized publicly, it is kind of a karmic thing. But then one could say all the numbers are karmic like that.